with that wonderful welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Alice. Good evening, everyone. Can I welcome you to St Mary's at Botus Fleming? Welcome to a very special evening. Uh, we welcome you, uh, Deputy Lieutenant Bishop Hugh Archdeacon Kelly. And we welcome Reverend Richard, Katie, and Delawin, the priest in charge for the Salt Ashley Ministry. We welcome the whole congregation, particularly those watching via the gift of technology. This is the beginning of a new chapter for the Saltash Area Ministry. And many people have wondered why we're having it uh, for service here at Botus Fleming. And the reason is, is because we want to recognise that the rural churches play a much a part in ministry, in certainly rural Cornwall, as they do with the town churches. But of course, uh, Reverend Richard will have responsibility for, for the, all the parishes, four parishes in the area ministry. But just tonight, we are just remembering uh, that the rural ministry of balances with the town ministry as well. Would you please stand for our opening hymn, All People That On Earth Do Well. moment 
And then we're looking forward and we're asking for God's uh, blessing and grace to be with Richard, but to be with all of you as you step out into whatever it is that is prepared for you. So I do encourage you as we go through this service to pray for Richard and for Kaylee and for one another. Uh, in amongst all the form formality of a service like this, make your own prayers for all that has been, all that is, and all that is to come. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are here as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him our worship and our praise, to hear and to receive his holy word, and to pray for his blessing on all who work in his name. Today we thank God for the ministry and mission of his church over the years in these parishes and for those who have shared in it during this time of vacancy and transition. Now we welcome Richard and his family to these parishes to license him to the ministry that he will share, to pray for Richard and for those who will minister alongside him and to dedicate ourselves afresh to the service of God in these communities and to the call of God for each one of us. And so we begin with prayer. Let us pray. God our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you for calling us through your Son Jesus Christ into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for all your faithful people that each, in their vocation and ministry, may be an instrument of your love. Give to this, your servant Richard, the needful gifts of grace, for the good of your church, and for the welfare of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? Well, good evening everyone. I'm here with the world in my hands and it will become apparent why that is a little bit later. We're here at the beginning of a journey for Richard, for Kaylee, for Elowin. Also the beginning of a journey for the churches of these two benefices. And for all of us in this deanery, we are on a journey as we go through something called the On The Way process, which is about a six to nine month consultation, thinking about where we've come from and where we're going. And what we want to do tonight is to encourage you all to think about that, to think about where you have come from and where you are going. And uh, we're going to do that in a slightly interactive way. Uh, I think Helen has some post-it notes. I don't even know where Helen is. I think she's hiding behind a pillar. Helen, would you be able to distribute some or find a way of distributing some post-it notes? And uh, everybody needs a pen as well. And on the first post-it note that you have, we'd like you to write or draw where you have come from. Now, it's up to you how you interpret that. You might want to say, well, I've come from just down the road. Um, or you might want to say, well, actually, where I've come from is really my home in our growth. Or... Um, where I've come from is something about my background. So that's what you're going to do first. If you don't feel comfortable writing, you can have a go at drawing, or you can just hold onto a piece of paper and, and let it represent that thing, that place for you. So that's what we're going to do first of all. You may need to share the pens. But it's all about thinking about our rootedness, where we have come from. And it might be that there are other places that are significant for you as well, that feel like home to you, and they represent something of where you've come from. So that's the first piece of paper that you have. I don't want to give you too many instructions yet, because some of you haven't got the first piece of paper yet. When you have done that with your first piece of paper, the next activity is for you to think about where you'd like to go. That's why I've got the globe here, because I thought some of you might be really ambitious and want to travel halfway around the world. 
but where would you like to go? Again, it might be a place just up the road, and that's okay. But it might be that you'd like to go further afield, or it might be that you'd like to go back to somewhere. But the next part of the activity is future-focused. Where would you like to go to? So the first part, looking back, where have you come from? And the second part, where are you going? If you're joining us at home, you might like to take part in that activity as well. We're going to continue to pick up this theme throughout the service this evening. And uh, I'd encourage you just to hold on to those pieces of paper now. You'll need them a little bit later. And to continue to ponder those questions. Where have I come from and where am I going to? And where are we coming from collectively and where are we going to? Bishop Hugh, I present Richard McGrath to be licensed as priest in charge of the Benefice of Saltash and the Benefice of Landrake with St. Erdy and Botus Fleming. Chris, thank you. And thank you to all those who, with prayer, have been involved in the appointment of Richard to these benefices. Some questions now to you, Richard. Richard, do you believe, so far as you know your own heart, that God has called you to serve here? I believe that God has called me. Will you commit yourself to sharing the mission and ministry of the people in these parishes and with them to further the kingdom of God? With the help of God, I will. Now, if I can uh, take your attention away from your post-it notes for a moment, I have a question for you all. And I ask this question with all seriousness, so uh, if you're not ready to say with equal seriousness the answer, then uh, that's fine, stay silent. But if you are ready to say, yes, we're here to support Richard, not just now on a happy day like this, but into the future, on the really great joyful days and on the days when it's not going so well, then answer up loudly. People of God, will you welcome Richard to your communities and work creatively and faithfully with him? and do all in your power together to extend God's kingdom and to make him known in the world. With the help of God, we will. Thank you. And we're going to continue now, if you'd like to stand, we're going to continue by singing what it is that we believe firmly and truly. Would you like to stand, please?
as disciples in Christ, we are called to read and reflect on the scriptures that we may grow in our faith. Richard, will you work with us to deepen our knowledge and, un and understanding of the things of God? With the help of God, I will. Will you share with us in the regular study and proclamation of God's word that together we may bring the light of faith to those in darkness, kindle the fire of love upon the earth, and open the door of hope to the world. We will, together by God's grace, let us go deeper in Christ and share his good news with the world. Would you like to have your seats, please? <coughs> was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. thoughts together with Archdeacon Kelly a bit about where we've come from today or in life. You might be starting to cast your eyes, your minds to where you'd like to go. I'm going to pause now though, no post-it notes for this, this is just for you quietly in your own minds and hearts, to pay attention to that question, that wonderful question that God asks of Adam and Eve. Where are you? Where are you? So ask yourselves that question now. Hear the Lord asking you the question right now. Where are you? Literally here in this building, of course, but more deeply than that, as we emerge from the first stage of COVID and into whatever's coming next, and as we witness a horrific war in Europe, something we thought we would never see again, and as it feels like the foundations of the earth are being shaken, and as we pray blessing over all of you at the beginning of this new season in the life of your church, where are you? And in the life of your family, and your friends, and your community, and at work, where are you? Really? Where are you? <coughs> Take a moment in quiet <coughs> and ponder on that in your hearts. stirring in your heart or in your mind. And we're going to stand and we're going to sing again. And as we do so, I invite you to hear what these words, the words of the Psalm 23, remind us of that wherever you are, 
you are in God's presence. Would you like to stand? <coughs> Well, Richard, uh, today marks, obviously, the formal beginning of a new ministry. It's the outcome of your response to the calling that God's laid on your life. And so today is, in a deeply important way, about this very particular calling to this place 
and uh, this time. So before I say anything else, thank you, Richard, for your yes to God, which brings all of us to this moment. And for all the other yeses, many of which we will never know about, which have to come for today to be possible. And Kaylee, thank you to you as well for your yes and for the inevitable joys and sacrifices that we know uh, it brings with it. And uh, Elwin, thank you. Um, just, <laughs> just thank you. <laughs> and amazing things happen when we say yes to God. Things that we never even expected. Things that we hadn't even dreamt were possible. It's as if God calls us to partner with him in something and when we have the courage to say yes and a space opens up and the Holy Spirit can pour into it and fill it with grace and with love. And Richard, I'm sure you know a lot about that already, having experienced the grace that God has poured into the open space of your yes to his call. And as we together do the formal work of licensing you to this new ministry today. It's like we're opening the door to that space again. And my prayer, our prayer together, is that the Spirit will pour in and fill everything that you're already doing and will be doing with the people and communities of this faithful group of churches. And that wonderful things will happen. Things you're already praying for and things that you can't even imagine yet. And I want, as you step into this new calling and this new season in your own life and in the life of your churches, I want you to hear three things. The first, the deep call that's made to you as a priest in the church is not actually about you. Or at least it's only about you insofar as it's also <coughs> about the communities that you serve. Your call, your deep call, is to make sure that the church is being church, that the beautiful, broken communities of people that you now lead and serve know that they are God's people, and that they are therefore all called, everyone, every person who counts themselves a Christian, a follower of Jesus, is called, every single one, because there is no hierarchy of calling in God's church. Sometimes, I think, we might think that there is a hierarchy of that kind. Maybe you know it. It's the one that starts down here somewhere with the person who gets to read on Sunday and moves up to the person who leads the prayers and then up to the church warden, to the lay reader, to the curate, and then finally the priest. But I hope you know that's not how God works. I hope you know that's definitely not what happened when the church was born on that day when the Holy Spirit was sent to empower that fragile little community of Jesus believers hidden away in Jerusalem, everyone received the same Spirit, and everyone was called. And what was true back then is true now. Everyone who follows Jesus in whatever way is called into kingdom partnership, called to open the space in which the Holy Spirit can come in and do that life-changing, world-changing work that marks our presence of the kingdom. <coughs> so Richard, in your new ministry here, make sure that everyone you work with, everyone you support and serve and lead, knows that God has a call that he is laying on their life, and do everything you can to spot, to nurture, and to bless people into that God-given call. Second, for some people, that call will be to something in the church or for the church. And thank God for all of you, of you for whom that's the case. Thank you to readers, to wardens, to treasurers, to messy church leaders, to the Sunday group leaders, to the people who clean, to the people who never get thanked. Thank you to all of you who serve your church community. For others of you, maybe more, your ministry will not be in church or it won't just be in church, or it won't primarily be in church. It will be at work. It'll be in the school playground. It'll be out on the dog walk. For many people, God's call is to share the name of Jesus in places far beyond the walls of the church community. It's to care for the lost, for the needy and the broken in schools and in hospitals. 
It'll be to tell the story of God where the story's been forgotten or where it's never been heard. It'll be to work against injustice and poverty, not for an hour on Sunday, but from Monday to Saturday. Just as we sometimes might think that there's a hierarchy of calling, so we might also sometimes think that being called is all about church. But church was never meant to be an hour on Sunday. Church is the community of those who have met Jesus and are off to do his work in the world that he loves and which needs him so much. You might know the story about two people who met Jesus on the road on their way to a town called Emmaus. It's just after Jesus' crucifixion, and the two people are his disciples. And they think he's dead and buried, which he is. They've heard a rumour that some of their friends have seen him alive. And now they're walking along a road to a town called Emmaus, and they're talking about what's happened. And a man, it's Jesus, although they don't recognise him, comes and walks with them. And he asks them what they're talking about. And one of them replies, are you the only stranger who hasn't heard what's been going on? And the Greek word in that sentence for stranger is paraoikos. Paraoikos. It literally means the people outside the household. The strangers. The people who are not from here. Guess what English word we get from paraoikos? It's the word parish. The parish in the gospel is not the people who gather in church for an hour on Sunday. It's the people outside the house, the strangers, those who don't belong, those we don't yet know, those who need to find a home in God. And so, Richard, your work as a parish priest, which is so much to do with the church, of course, is fundamentally about sending people out way beyond it. You are called to equip the prophets and the evangelists and the teachers, the nurses, the grandparents, the local councillors, the shop workers, the volunteers, the prayer walkers to live out their calling in their ordinary, everyday lives in the world that God created and loves, out there, in the parish. And third, in all of this, remember what it's really all about. Because it's a high bar, and it is a glorious calling that you have said yes to. It's nothing less than equipping the saints, those who already follow Jesus and those who will do when they're introduced to him, for the ministry, for the calling laid before them, until all of us, all of us, come to maturity, to the full measure of the full stature of Christ. Richard, just to be really clear, you are not called to run a church. You're not called fundamentally even to lead services or even to be a good vicar. You are called to lead, to serve and to equip people to become more like Jesus tomorrow than we are today. And then again the next day and again the day after. Your deep down calling is to help people individually and as a whole community to become more like Jesus. And if you're going to do that, if you're really going to do that, well then you need to be growing in Christ too. You need to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus as he leads you on and he, as he calls you to greater maturity, to greater grace and to greater love. This calling which is yours, which is all about other people, all about serving them selflessly requires you to be selfish about just one thing, which is about giving your own heart, your own mind, strength and soul to Jesus Christ. Richard, thank you for your yes, which we affirm and celebrate and mark tonight. May many others come to know that they too are called and sent in Jesus' name through you and through your ministry. And may you, all of you, together, become more like Jesus tomorrow than you are today, for the glory of God and for his kingdom, that it might come in these towns, in these villages, in these parishes, that you are all together called and sent to serve. Amen. Amen.
The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. <coughs> it professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds which the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. Richard, in the declaration you are about to make, Will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Richard McGrath, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by the I, Richard McGrath, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Richard McGrath, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Bishop of Truro and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Thank you. And we're going to go and sign a piece of paper that says, for <coughs> sure, he really means it. <laughs> Hugh Edmund, by divine permission, Bishop of St. Germans, to my beloved in Christ, Richard McGrath, clerk in holy orders, greeting. Whereas the benefice of Saltash and the benefice of Landrake with St. Ernie and Botus Fleming within the diocese and jurisdiction of the Bishop of Truro now stand vacant, I do hereby grant you my license and authority to serve as priest in charge of the said benefices until the admission of an incumbent to each of the said benefices and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging to that office, given under my hand and the Episcopal seal of the Bishop of Truro this 8th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2022. Richard, receive this cure of souls, which is both yours and mine, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as I pray God's blessing over Richard, I invite you, please, to pray earnestly with me for him and for one another. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, give you vision, courage, and love to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those that you love, and remain with you always. Amen. <coughs> Richard, I place you in one of the accustomed seats of the priests of these parishes. Pray for your people. Lead them in worship and service. 
and encourage them in their witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God's blessing rest upon your ministry. Amen. Amen. Richard, this is a most important moment for you, for you have chosen to take up your ministry here in the Saltash area churches. As a Deputy Lord Lieutenant of Cornwall, I am the official representative of Her Majesty the Queen here, and it is my pri privilege and pleasure to welcome you, and of course your family, to Cornwall. As you may know, Cornwall is itself an ancient kingdom with its own language and unique Celtic heritage. In addition, it was the first royal duchy. The dukedom of Cornwall was created almost 700 years ago by King Edward III when he made his seven-year-old son, the Black Prince, the first Duke of Cornwall, at a ceremony nearby at Restormal Castle near Loswithiel. As the Queen's eldest son, His Royal Highness Prince Charles, is our present Duke of Cornwall, the 24th since it came into being in 1337. Only recently our government made the decision to fully recognise the Cornish as a national minority under the Framework Convention for Protection of National Minorities, if you could believe it, which is designated, designed to protect and promote cultural diversity. Cornwall has some of the most beautiful natural landscapes to be found anywhere in the world. Here you will find some of the country's most extraordinary gardens, a truly spectacular coastline, internationally famous surfing beaches, windswept moors, well-used footpaths, and countless historic sites. In fact, the legacy of the great days of tin mining remains with us and is celebrated globally with the award of World Heritage Site Status. So, congratulations to you for choosing to minister God's work here amongst us in this particularly lovely part of southeast Cornwall, squeezed as we are between the rivers Tamar and Lyna. The Cornish motto is one and all, and there is no better description of the sense of unity and common purpose you will find here. We welcome the additional talents you bring and trust that you will play a full part in the community here for many years to come. Well done. <coughs> Richard, as uh, Rural Dean, I welcome you to this part, beautiful part of uh, Cornwall. It's great to have you among us. I welcome you too on behalf of all ministers, both lay and ordained, in the deanery. And we're really looking forward to working with you. We offer you true friendship and collegiality as we seek to build the kingdom and pray together in this part of the world. There are a few others here. I'm going to out and welcome uh, Richard tonight. Could I invite the uh, mayor and mayoress? Richard, on behalf of Sawtash Town Council, I would like to welcome you to Sawtash and the surrounding areas, where we not only enjoy some beautiful countryside and wonderful views, we also have a magnificent community spirit, the like of which I have not encountered anywhere else. Richard, you will doubtless come to terms with some lifestyle changes, 
and find perhaps a more relaxed way of life here in Cornwall, there are no tube stations and no northern line to help you get from A to B. He's a Londoner. But as long as you grasp the essentials such as scone, not scone, with jam first, of course, and also get to understand the meaning of the word directly, that I'm sure that you will find life amongst us to be as rewarding as it will be to those parishioners that reside within the Sawtash team ministry area who will look to you for spiritual guidance. Richard, we warmly welcome you and your family. Could I invite any other ministers or leaders of local churches who are going to come out and welcome Richard? I'm Jonathan Buds, the uh, Methodist Superintendent in Saltash, and uh, Tim, my Baptist colleague, has elected me. <laughs> um, it's, it is a genuine delight to be able to welcome you, Richard, and your family. We have uh, waited with an anticipation for your arrival, and having got to know you a little bit already, we just delight in the thought of um, sharing in ministry and fellowship and friendship, we're sure. Um, you have a rich heritage that you inherit in the role that you're taking on, and uh, we just thank God for your ministry as will be and has been to this point. So welcome on our behalf. But I invite to, uh, we have possibly Tracy Fletcher from Bishop Cornish School. <coughs> School, we want to welcome you into our, our loving family. We very much look forward to seeing you in school, so welcome. Are there any of the governors of Bishop Cornish that uh, might be speaking tonight? No, you've spoken for them, that's lovely. And you've been some of the head teacher's office already, Richard, so <laughs> you take note. Uh, Ed O'Hara from Sir Robert Jeffries and some of the young people from the school are going to welcome you. Good evening everyone, good evening Richard. Um, congratulations um, just uh, from all of the community really in Sir Robert Jeffries School in Landrake. Uh, we wanted to offer you our warm welcome to you and your family. Um, you're very welcome and we look forward to you coming into school and of course possibly sometimes just coming to the Church of St Michael's in, in Landrake to, to visit you there. Um, so that's on behalf of all the staff, the parents and the governors of the school I want to say welcome. And I have with me Alfie, our head boy, and Kira, our head girl. I think Kira wants to say something as well. Are there any members of the local council here tonight who are going to speak? And yes. Oh, excellent. Sorry, yes. you were behind I'm hidden behind a pillar. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I am Dave Edwards from. Uh, oh my, I'm the chairman, aren't I? Of the parish council. <laughs> we voted for me. And uh, Hacks. Uh, don't forget Hacks. Um, congratulations. Uh, nice to meet you and your lovely family. Um, we're very tight community I suppose and thriving and um, long may it be so and we work hard in the in a local community with the clerk um, and good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah thank you Richard. I'd just like to say as the parish clerk and the finance officer of the books on the parish council so I'd like to welcome you uh, to the community and um, you'll find it's called the gateway to Sotash or gateway to call sorry and I think that in itself Brings challenges with its geographically where it is, but uh, you know that's uh, just just something I'm sure you'll, you'll pick up on, uh, you know, with here. And just geographically here, just say so you know that Botus Fleming is Botus Fleming here, but part of the community is the other side across the roundabout, which is Hats. That's H A W T. <laughs> we don't say we don't use H's. 
to the chat. You have to get used to the lead. Could it be it's only one word or two? It's two, yes. That's right, yes. <laughs> yeah, anyway, just to let you know on that score, both of these form the parish council here. And um, uh, we've got to think we've got some skills that we can hopefully bring to you and um, to, to your family and as you carry on with your ministry. You know, I'm, I'm a sort of Ash Loud and actually about born and bred. So my, my, I don't use my family went back in St Nicholas and Fred, so I know well if there's anything we can do to support as you go as you carry on with your ministry we'd be happy to do so. Right, you're welcome. I'm sure you'll have good fun. Right, once you get used to us. <laughs> Are there any other people who can speak on behalf of organisations who would expect me to speak? Um, let us all then join together in welcoming Richard. So Kaylee and Elwin, um, we've had such a warm, wonderful welcome so far from from all the, all the people we've met, and we look forward to getting to know all of you more and, and ministering in this place. Thank, thank you again. We, we were very restrained with our applause as people came forward to speak, weren't we? So uh, let's give uh, Richard another round of applause. Kaylee. to uh, remember baptism vows that were maybe said for some of us many years ago when we were Elowin's age, maybe for some of us more recently than that. And if you are a follower of Christ, you are baptised, when we get to it I invite you to say the words in bold and to affirm again your commitment to love God and to love your neighbour. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of his kingdom, and that, therefore I invite you to join with me as we affirm our baptismal covenant together. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? With the power of God, I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? With the help of God, I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? With the help of God, I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? With, With the help of God, I will. Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by prayer for the world and its leaders? And God knows we need that. By defending the weak, and by seeking peace and justice. With the help of God, I will. And may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the bit I enjoy. Uh, so. No, we're just being reminded of our baptism by saying some words. We also get to be reminded.
reminded the water. Sadly, for me at least, I've only got very little bowl to sprinkle for <laughs> But that might be good news for you. Some of my good friends from uh, Sir Robert Jeffrey's school. I was at Sir Robert Jeffrey confirming four of their pupils today, and one of their members of the staff, and I've been looking forward to making them get there. <laughs> disciples of Christ, we are called to be people of prayer and to come to God in worship. Richard, will you work with the people of these churches and these parishes to encourage them in worship and in prayer? I will. Together, let us undertake to build up our worshipping communities, offering our prayers and praises to the glory of God. With the help of God, we will. Let us pray to God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our friend, our brother, our Saviour. <coughs> it is God's love which has brought us here this evening. Let us pray to him now. Loving, generous God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love and faithfulness which you have shown us, guiding us and leading us safely through strange and challenging times. We ask for your blessings on your worldwide church as it strives to carry out your work. We think today particularly of the five churches in our own cluster as we begin a new chapter in our lives together. We thank you for Richard and Kaylee and Elowen and we ask your blessing upon them as we welcome them into our family. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. We thank you for the various gifts which you have bestowed upon us, some of which we have used, and some of which we have kept hidden or ignored. Let us not forget that your gifts are given to us for the benefit of others, to be used to build a strong, loving family which supports one another and enables us to serve the communities in which we live, showing your love and care to those around us, and providing an opportunity for those who do not yet know you to experience your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those who are suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for world leaders, for compassion, strength, 
and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that in this moment of crisis, we may reach out in solidarity to our brothers and sisters in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all. disciples of Christ, we are commanded to remember him in the taking and breaking of bread. Will you join with us to ensure that we continue to feed on Christ? I will. Will you join with us in following this command, gathering whenever we are able in Christ's name and remembering him in the taking of bread and wine? Without the cross we are. Alan Bennett sketch from the 1960s where he does a very cruel parody of a vicar and 
uh, Alan Fitter preaches about going to the railway station to, to look at the trains, but he gets a bit lost and ends up going out of the entrance by mistake. He says, and the man there said to me, he said, not in so many words, he says, where are you going? Where are you going? Surely a question for us all. And it struck me a few days ago, I think that subconsciously is where I got the idea of, of putting to you that question, where are you, where are you coming from, where are you going? But I think Alan Bennett is right. It is a question for us all, a great question to ponder as we've been pondering it tonight. But by the grace of God, as Christian people, we don't just have to ponder it. We have the glimmer of an answer to that question, where are you coming from, where are you going? Because we know that we are God's good creation. More than that, children of God who are born not of the will of man or the will of flesh, but of God. That's where we're coming from. As to where we're going, Jesus himself promises he will come and take us to be with him in John's Gospel. Of course, the question, Lord, St. Thomas says, Lord, where are we? we don't know where you're going. How can we follow you? which Jesus replies, I am the way and the truth and the life. I think at the very least that's a, a very heartening answer to that question, where are you coming from, where are you going? More well, heartening perhaps than the answers we might have come up with on our own. The answers that perhaps the, the man or woman in the street has in their back pocket to live by. The sort of answers we might infer from the shocking events we see on the news. Indeed, that answer is news. It is part of our good news that we are blessed to be able to share with the people we meet, the people in our communities, with our friends, our relatives, with all those whom God gives us a grace to show in a small way the light and the glory and the good news and the joy of Jesus Christ. At this point, I now um, smoothly segue to give you a list of the services this Sunday, fresh from the, the, fresh from the website. At 9.30 in the morning this Sunday, there will be a service of Holy Communion at St. Stephen by Saltash. Also at 9.30 in the morning, there will be a service of Holy Communion at St. Michael's Landrake. At 11 o'clock in the morning, there will be a service of Holy Communion at St. Nicholas and St. Faith Saltash. And at a quarter past 11 in the morning, there will be another service of Holy Communion at uh, St. Mary's Moses Fleming. I might also add that later this evening, God willing, there will be a service of night prayer uh, at 9.30pm at St. Stephen's Church. Uh, I'll be there and you're uh, welcome to join me. And indeed, people perhaps who are just watching this online, if you'd like to come to that, uh, certainly. And tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, at 10am at St. Stephen's, uh, the uh, Wednesday lunchtime communions are being revived on a weekly basis um, for, for Lent in the first instance, and then we'll see how we go. So I hope to, to see you all at every single one of those services. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us ask for God's blessing upon our life and ministry as we follow the way of Christ in this place and in all our places. As we journey up, may God the Father enable us to share in worship and prayer that our lives in Christ may be deepened and that we may grow together in the Spirit. Amen. As we journey in, may God the Father help us to share together in study and reflection that we may become true disciples of Christ and live in the power of his Spirit. Amen. As we journey with, may Christ form us into his body in this place that we may celebrate our diversity of gifts and care for those in need. Amen. And as we journey out, may the Spirit of God empower us to spread the gospel of the Father's love, that we may work together to build up his church and discover the joy of Christ's kingdom among us. Amen. Now I invite you to open your hands if it would help you to, as a sign of being ready to receive God's blessing, or if you prefer simply to bow your heads, to open uh, your hearts within you. And so go now, knowing the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that they may remain with you everywhere you go, 
every day of your life. Amen. 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 Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.